So here at the Cooper's Ferry site in uh, Idaho, we find a lot of artifacts that are made out of various types of rock. The most common type of rock that we see here are cryptocrystalline silicates, or cherts. Um, they have lots of other names like jasper, agate, chalcedony, flint, but they're all basically a type of chert. Uh, here's some examples of these artifacts that we see here. These are chert artifacts that were found at the site. And you can see the materials, they vary widely in color and in transparency. Some of them you can see through, others are totally opaque. So we predominantly find cryptocrystalline silicates or cherts here at the Cooper's Ferry site. Um, we think that that's because mainly the, the areas surrounding the site primarily are, uh, contain these types of rocks. You can see behind us here that it's a nice broad landscape with lots of uh, lava flows, basaltic lavas. And these, these cherts actually form inside the, the lava flows, in between flows and stuff like that. And we can find them all over the canyon here. So while we know that these cherts form in the basaltic lava flows surrounding the site, we don't know exactly where they're actually coming from, the, the tool stone that they use in the site. We don't know where in this, these basaltic lava flows because they're really big. They cover an area across much of eastern Washington as well as Idaho. So what we're trying to do now is figure out if we can zoom in to try to figure out where exactly the tool stone that is found in the site is coming from within these lava flows. This is important to, to know because it'll tell us about where these people are moving around in the landscape, uh, who they're talking to and interacting with, their neighbors, who they get along with, who they maybe don't get along so well with. So it really tells us about how people were living here a long time ago and where they are going. So one way to think about stone tools is to think about them in terms of the life history of artifacts. And the beginning of a life history of artifacts starts with the raw material. So in my hand here, I have a nodule of chert that was found in part of the Salmon River Canyon. And this chert gets located by people of the past, might get transported to a site, and then the nodule will get worked into something useful. So flakes that can then be turned into other kinds of tools. So what I'm gonna demonstrate for you here is just some really quick napping where I'm going to strike the rock and produce some useful flakes from this nodule. So we can see that the inside looks really different from the outside. The cortex, as it's called, or the outer rind, can often be weathered and it looks a little different. This has a really nice glassy, um, at least a feel to it. It doesn't look necessarily that glassy, but you could hear that high-pitched hit when I was striking it. So here I'm just creating a series of flakes, but what I'm really intending to do with this is to remove some of this outer rind that's harder to control in terms of the flaking itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike right on this platform that I've prepared. I'm gonna turn it over to do that. But what I'm gonna to try to do is drive the force right along this and pop off a flake that's nice and useful. So my flake only went part of the way across. I'm gonna prepare the platform again. I'm gonna go with a bigger rock. What we have produced here on the ground is a lot of useful flakes. These are flakes that can be picked up, used as they are, they're nice and sharp. You can cut meat, cut hides, woodworking, bone working, any fiber working and so on. And then when they're done using this thing, you can either resharpen it or if you don't want to, you throw it down, pick up another flake and keep on going. So we have a lot of different analytical tools in our uh, toolbox here to try to determine where the tool stones that were found in the site uh, are found out in the area surrounding us to try to match them properly. We, one of these techniques is called portable x-ray fluorescence or PXRF and that looks at the geochemistry of 
uh, the tools that we find in the site, and then we can compare that to the geochemistry of the rocks and the lava flows surrounding us to try to match them and figure out which tool came from which source. So geographical information systems, or GIS, also is an important tool for us to try to figure out where these cherts are coming from in the landscape. They, um, it'll allow us to build predictive models of where they're possibly coming from that we can then hone in on to try to find these actual uh, chert sources in the landscape. 